Hello guys and welcome in this new video. I'm here with the well-known Mikado Logo 700 and the V-Bar Control Touch. You might remember from 2017, I actually did the video where I was explaining all my secret parameters of the V-Bar Neo of the Logo 700. And I think it's time to do it again in 2022 because I did a major change in my setup. I do use now the Azure Power Blades and they are really amazing. I have the AZ-105 in the back and the AZ-700 in the main and this one radically changed the parameters of the helicopter. So you want to know which kind of parameters I know and which are my secret parameters that allows me to do flights such as this one. Then you can follow this video and you'll get to know them. Okay, first thing first, we're gonna turn on the Mikado V-Bar control and also the Logo 700. All right, so now we also have to plug in the battery. And here we are. If you don't have too much time to watch all the video where I will explain more in detail what the parameters are doing, you can actually go at the very end and I will have a table, a parameter table, and you can just get from there all the parameters and put them into your radio and you're ready to fly with my setup. But for whoever is interested in knowing more in detail what the parameters are doing, let's jump into that. So whenever you access the homepage of the Vibra Control Touch, where you can see on the right side of the Logo 700, we can enter into the main parameters in the Flight Parameter folder. Once we access this one, we can go in the Collective Curve. Before we start the all parameters explanation, it's very important to know hardware-wise what kind of setup do I have. I have the VBAR Neo, of course, the Scorpion Ultimate, this is the 4525-520 KV, the Obbywing 200 amp platinum is the. I'm also using the, the stock fan just to cool down for situations such as the World Championship in Dubai. I'm using the Savox Monster servos with the Mikado servo arm with a screw in the center of the three holes. So I use the center one. And um, the batteries are 5000 milliamps 50C from OptiPower. And that's basically the whole setup I have in this helicopter. I. I'm sure that if you use the same settings and you put the one I have in my radio, you will really feel comfortable flying with this helicopter for our 3D. So let's jump into the collective curve. As you can see, I have three different banks, but they're all the same. So I have one, two, and three. They are minus 95, minus 47, and zero. Then in the main rotor, instead, I have Expo 42. Why 42? It's because I love to have the helicopters very smooth and very controllable whenever I do soft maneuvers. But also at the very end, I also want to have a higher control of the helicopter and a higher rate. That's why the exponential is also quite high, but also the agility is quite high. When we talk about agility, I have 119, 128, 128. The first bank is with lower RPM, second one with medium, and third one with higher RPM. Gain, 70, 72, 72. The style, I have 115 in the first bank and that's because I would like the Neo to be a bit more robotic and a bit more stable, stable in, uh, in the first bank for doing like slow maneuvers. But whenever it comes to the second and third bank, I want to have 100 because I want to have a bit more control. And usually what the style does is exactly giving more control to the fingers rather than the control of the stabilizer itself, which is the deeper Neo. Lightness is a very interesting parameter and I keep it stock for the Logo 700, which is 35. Elevator per compensation 10, paddle simulation I always keep it at zero, integral is 60, pitch pump zero, very important for me as well. Collective balance 35 and the optimizer value I always keep them on usually. And uh, in order to adjust for the first 20 flights. 
and I keep them on, especially in different weather conditions, because it's very important and the helicopter just cooled pretty well. So I would simply leave it always on. And the general response is on 50. All right, now let's jump into the tail rotor. These are the Expo, I have 28. Yo rate is 136, so quite a fast tail. Gain is 77, proportional 88, integral 60, I limiter minus one, I discharge minus one, differential zero. Collective precompensation, I have 60, 37 and 45. This one really depends on from machine to machine. I have a few other helicopters that have a few points of difference. Nothing crazy, but a few points different. Then the cyclic precompensation is seven. Stop gain A is always higher than the B because it's the one that is going against the momentum of the tail. So it's 48, 42 and 40. The higher the RPM, the lower this number must be. Then in the other case, uh, I have stop gain B, 38, 38, 34. Here the optimizer as well, I always kept them in out, uh, auto mode, but you can also set up the same optimizer I have and see what you feel. Uh, and the work suppression, I never change it. Here on the left, you can keep auto opti, which is the optimizer I said before, and the tail acceleration is on 55. Governor, very important. Why do I use the V-bar governor? There's a very uh, clean explanation, uh, which is that the V-bar is pretty smart and knows the RPM constantly of the helicopter, which means that it automatically reduces the tail gain in order to avoid that during an overspeed, for example, the tail is shaking. And that's an important thing, and that's why I use the V-bar governor, but not only. Also because I really like constant RPM, I really like to have a great pitch control, and this is what the V-Bar Neo provides me. And never failed. So um, I'm running 1860 in the first bank, 1960 in the second, and 28 in the, in the third. With a gain of 36, 39, and 40. Also here is pretty important to keep the gain quite steady. Uh, usually if you have too high gain, you will notice that the RPM are increasing very fast and decreasing very fast in a high frequency. They will make a sort of like do 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 do. This is pretty much what you will feel. It will increase RPM and then we start to shake. So you should basically try to find out while giving positive and negative pitch and also positive then zero, negative and zero. You should not hear any difference in terms of RPM control. It should be quite steady. The closer you get to the precise parameter, this is more stability you will get from the governor itself. All right, how to trim? That's an interesting part. It's risky, but I do it in a specific way and it's quite of a secret the way I'm doing it, but you can try. You can keep the helicopter in a flat position. You can give full yo and the helicopter will start spinning. If you leave the cloche, so the elevator and aileron in mode two, I have it in mode one, so it's a bit more uh, complicated, but you can leave it and you see while doing the pyre of the tail, if the disc of the rotor, if it's flat or not. If you see that it's moving slightly like this, you can try to first click on the elevator and move the knob while flying, while pyroiting. But it's much easier with mode two because you can control the pitch. So you spin, control the pitch, leave it there and see if it moves. If it moves, you spin one of the knobs. For example, you try with the elevator and you see if it gets better and it gets flatter or if it gets worse. And you always have to find the balance. So for example, it's, it's something like this. You try to move, it gets better, but at a point it will also get worse again if you keep on sliding because it's not only the elevator which needs to be adjusted. So you find the sweet spot of the elevator once you found it, you jump into the aileron and you also tune that one. And whenever you find the perfect parameter, it will be really flat. I'm telling you this because sometimes the auto trim, if there's a little bit of wind, it might take a bit more time and it might be still a little bit off. But if you then do first the auto and then you tune it manually, you will get it really, really precise. <clears throat> With that being said, let's jump into the last parameters and then we are good to go is basically the name, face up wire front, everything is clean. These are the main parameters you can have a look, but the trims must be different than mine. Collective, 95, 95. And then I have the cyclic calibration. 
This one is set on 8 degrees, which for me is 73 points. I selected this one for the monster servo and detail is on the limit of 108, 108 symmetric. This is where you select the V-bar electric governor. These are the parameters for the electric governor of the V-bar. And I would say we are done. All right, so as promised, I'm gonna show you the table setup of the all parameter with the just plane, which is this one right here. And uh, you can simply take them, put them into your one of the bank of your helicopter. So you can just try it out and see how you feel. In case you like it, you can then copy paste all of these parameters into your V-Bar control and V-Bar Neo for your Logo 700. And uh, make sure you have the same setup. And then if you like the video, also remember to put a like, subscribe, and thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.